It is a pleasure to be here this morning. I thank uh, Dr. Maria Peters for the invitation to, to join you today and visit for a little bit on the, the cost of mycoplasma in the growing pig and based on, on some comparisons of, of flows in our system uh, over, over several years. And to start out, just to, to note that uh, this is by no means a statistical analysis. It is not intended to be such. It's a comparison of closeout data of one mycoplasma pneumonia negative flow and two mycoplasma pneumonia positive pig flows in our system over the course of uh, about three and a half years. Uh, each of these flows in this time frame would be several hundred thousand pigs. And, and dozens, uh, several dozen closeout, individual closeouts. So it's an attempt to, to put a cost on mycoplasma and the value of being mycoplasma negative. And in my opinion, uh, there is huge value to producing the negative pig. And mycoplasma being one, and of course, PERS the other. In my experience, a breeding herd that is mycoplasma negative over time remain negative with uh, greater predictability even than PERS. Filtered or, or especially non-filtered herds. Uh, and filtered herds better success in remaining negative for, for PERS also. So we have pursued multiple mycoplasma elimination programs to achieve negative status uh, because in my opinion again there is a predictable outcome, as Dr. Yeski just showed, 89% with the herd closure method, uh, with a well-designed and well-implemented elimination program, and a relatively low cost to uh, carrying out those elimination programs. And so our goal is to capture the value of that negative grow-finish pig and to see the benefit of that in our operation. <clears throat> and again, just to at least get one of the three of these pathogens out of the equation in the grow finish populations. Uh, we unfortunately are living with flu in our industry and PERS depending on location, geography, but if we can eliminate mycoplasma pneumonia, that is a good start in, in reducing the number of pathogens to deal with in the diagnostics, reducing by one just the, the um, looking at methods of control and, and uh, minimization of clinical signs. So in my mind, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, an easy decision to continue to pursue myco mycoplasma negative status. So in this comparison, there are three farms. Uh, the first farm is uh, uh, PERS negative throughout the entire time frame of the analysis, uh, but mycoplasma pneumonia positive. Second farm is uh, had changes in status of the pig flow from PERS positive to negative over the course, but was micro positive throughout the time frame uh, to varying degrees of stability or instability in the breeding herd and the flow. And the third farm uh, did have some PERS positive uh, pigs in the grow finish over this time frame, but through the entirety was mycoplasma negative. So I didn't attempt to... to um, make adjustments to take out closeouts that dealt with PERS positive versus negative. So what you're going to see is face value. It's uh, in the real world, our closeouts of this time frame of these three pig flows. So the first uh, graph just shows the uh, group mortality for each of the closeouts over this time frame from 2012 through the second quarter of 2015. The blue line is the uh, mycoplasma negative pig flow, and at times in this flow there were uh, girl finished pigs that were PERS positive. The red line is a uh, flow which is, uh, in fact, has, was PERS negative through this entirety, but mycoplasma positive. And the green line, mycoplasma positive, with periods of instability and PERS positive status as well. So as you can see, 
uh, readily, uh, even with some PERS involved at times in the mycoplasma negative flow, the um, group mortality for each of these closeouts would be ranging from 1% to 3%, and you'll see in a bit that the average was right near 2.5%. Uh, at periods of time in each of the other flows, whether that was with flu, uh, which was probably the case, and in, in uh, both situations, changes in the GILT developer status because of the need to close the existing positive GILT developer and repopulate, and there start over again in trying to acclimate for mycoplasma pneumonia. The medication cost is the other big factor. Uh, again, in the mycoplasma negative flow, um, well under a dollar. This is feed medication, any water-soluble medications used as therapeutics, and all injectable uh, medication use. And again, uh, major differences in the flows over time, in the changes in stability or, or, or uh, times of instability in this grow finish flow. So as you can see very readily, when there's times of uh, uh, mortality, we respond by, by attempting to control that with various processes of water medication, injectable, and, and feed grade medication. Um, as you can also see, there's varying degrees of success in, in responding to that uh, to that, and it, it, it's really difficult to, and when you're going through a time of instability in the grow finished uh, uh, flow, when you're dealing with the time horizon of four to six months from some intervention you might take on the south farm, whether that's uh, antibiotic at weaning, a change in timing or frequency of the vaccination program, and other uh, antibiotic therapies as you make a change early in that grow finish phase or even the nursery phase or back to the breeding herd, you don't know for another four to six months if that change is effective or if that's going to improve that flow. As I mentioned, as, as Dr. Yeski mentioned, uh, who is our consultant and has been on these projects for, for many years, uh, changes in the guilt developer status in our situation as you have closed a guilt developer for PERS elimination, that changed the status of the guilt developer relative to mycoplasma. <clears throat> so to the heart of the matter is uh, looking at these closeouts from 2012 through second quarter 2015, looking at average daily gain and feed conversion, adjusted feed conversion ratio to adjust for differences in sale weight of each of these flows, percent mortality, percent substandard sales, and medication cost. And so using uh, a value of a per day in the finishing barn to, uh, to evaluate the cost of production relative to gain, fee conversion, mortality, and assuming a $125 cost in that pig at the time of mortality, a substandard sale of about half value of a full value, <clears throat> and the medication cost being straightforward in what that is, at the grow finish level. So using these uh, for your, for your uh, uh, reference, the mycoplasma negative flow as being the, the standard and comparing the cost of production of the grow finish pig over this three and a half year time frame, uh, putting dollar values to each of those production parameters, uh, the negative flow compared to the first positive flow of $2.58 disadvantage to the positive and $2.83 disadvantage to the second mycoplasma positive flow. And again, bear in mind there were times in which this mycoplasma negative flow was PERS positive, uh, so that's comparing uh, to a PERS negative over this entire time frame in the positive flow. So based on those three and a half years of, of closeout data, approximately $2.50 increased cost of production on the mycoplasma positive pig flows. In addition, the therapeutics and the interventions taken at the breeding herd level uh, with antibiotic at weaning and additional vaccinations added another 75 to 90 cents per pig on each of those two positive flows so you're looking at 325 to easily approaching $3.50 per pig. Uh, 
disadvantage on the mycoplasma positive flow. And during periods of instability or co-infections with PERS or, or, or flu, that number becomes greatly increased. As shown here, this is uh, comparing the negative flow to the two positives, and each of these bars indicate a quarter of closeouts, so the average cost of production of these positive flows over the negative. And you can see in those times approaching $9 per pig for a quarter, and easily uh, 5 to 6 to 7 approaching $9 increased cost of production over various time frames uh, in those times of instability. So again, when you're going through this time frame and, and seeing these closeouts and, and, and knowing the current status of the groups behind them and taking steps back at the sow farm level, um, it's very difficult to know when those, if and when, those interventions are going to take, uh, going to be effective in improving the flow of that pig, of, of the health of those pig flows. In addition to those costs directly in the grow finish uh, flows, there's additional cost in the mycoplasma positive GDU, in the uh, decrease in selection rate, the medication cost at the GDU level to, uh, to respond to those infections, uh, the time required to administer treatment to the positive pig flows, especially in times of co-infection with flu or PERS, and without doubt an effect on the employee morale in the girl finish uh, facilities dealing with the chronic mycoplasma pig flow uh, and, and treatment and seeing that that treatment at times is, is, uh, has minimum effect. Uh, my numbers and, and Paul's, I didn't, we didn't compare notes beforehand and I'm being hard on saying, you know, uh, what's the, the cost to benefit ratio. So if you're looking at the cost of an elimination program, real simple math, uh, in our situation, we'll need a second site, a finishing site, a couple thousand head facility to use to accumulate gilts as we're pushing the positive flow through. Um, so I took the cost of six months on a, on a uh, contract finishing site. Um, and if you allocate those across one year's wean pig production, why one year? That's how accountants think. That's how I think. But it really should be allocated over probably three, four, five years. And because that pig flow will most probably remain negative for upwards of five to six to ten years, given our history. The antibiotic therapy given to those piglets, and, uh, and uh, as shown by Dr. Yeski, uh, again, allocating those over one year's production, over 145,000 pigs, for example, on a 5,000. During the herd closure, there's potential always for some lost production, some decrease in breed numbers, and therefore a reduction in uh, wean pig output. I put a cost on that potentially of, a, of, of another 25 cents. So being tough on, on, my, uh, on my partial budget, I'm going to say it costs a dollar per wean pig to carry out that elimination program on a 5,000 sow herd. Um, and again, that cost of $4, three fifty to 4 easily a 3 to 1 payback. When you look at those times of instability, uh, 8, 9 to 1 payback. If I allocate that cost over several years, that payback becomes easily a, a 12 to 1. And so it doesn't take a lot of thought in my mind to uh, pursue negative status across our system. We've got uh, uh, three herds yet out of 14 to, uh, to get mycoplasma negative. So my goal and my role is producing a healthy, robust wean peg to uh, move into the grow finished division. And part of that is, is producing a mycoplasma negative peg. Thank you.